saya rasa kapur Kau kapur Kapur kelari wangi lagi Kau yang mayam Dia tu nombor kuis Wain negara Wain negara Come before you this morning Mahalami for having us this morning and My Malawi this morning For everybody and for the trustees Is that Our people were, were never our Kahiko, they never died to be saved. So, my man for me today is transparency. He's here to the other way face to face. Because Uncle Bob, you've been getting blasted on social media, Anthony Honan, Colette. And so, and to me, I'm tired of watching Emuki Kawakawa's videos. So, my man is. Who is here for federal recognition? And who is here for total independence? I just want to read this. Okay. We gather to express our frustration to the OHA, with OHA, to make it clear there is serious breach of trust between a state agency and the people that is charged with serving. First, many of us Kananka were not even, were not asked or given an input whatsoever to Act 195, Act 77, which mandated our beneficiary monies to be used for this nation within a nation effort. We were told it was going to happen. Second, OHA spent millions of dollars in supporting the Nayel Kulinaha and other federal recognition efforts. When that money was supposed to be used for educating our people regarding the different opinions options that we have that is wrong in an attempt to manipulate our people and believe in federal recognition as our only option. Yo. Due to this neglect by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, to truly engage and educate our people, we're here to make the following demands. One, Boha trustees need to clarify their positions on the final DOI rule to the communities they represent by holding meetings in the different communities. There are four. I'm going to read one and three. And Tita Kalama will read three and four. I um, mean, two and four. Um, three. All the trustees need, need to do a better job of listening and supporting the underrepresented voices in our community who are undertaking their own nation building efforts. Trustees can start by attending the next Aloha Aina, Aha Aloha Aina in Waianae on November 6th. Sister Kalama, like I said, she will read the other demands. Just for me, you know, being at the Native Hawaiian Convention last week, I'm calling out our story, or We look for, we look to you folks, for leadership. We're frustrated. Long. And my Kaila, you folks, um, I support a resolution for our brothers and sisters standing around. My Kaila. But like I said, what is this? What is the point on there? And then was all these videos that he posts up. Blasting you at the Blasting you at the Kole. Blasting you on Papa. Blasting his office. So I'm like, you know, I'm tired of hearing from second. So, this is why I came here today, for clarity. I'm a Peter. Yeah. Yeah, you're an awesome musician. I'm a musician myself, and I, I remember this song. Rise up and follow me, sons of Hawaii. Rise up and follow me, don't let me down. I'm here to plead to you folks. Can you folks raise your hand? Who is here for federal recognition? And who is here for your members? What question you ask first? Who among the trustees are for federal recognition? And who among the trustees are for independence? And like all the money that was spent for not your food, you can be spent for the other side. Because we still want to get something. Yeah, I'm sorry. 
Coco. Um, the, the position that this board took, I, I forget how many years ago. 2001. 2001. 2001. 2001. Oh, so yeah. You know, was to support federal recognition. So that is the current standing policy of the board. Well, who was here in 2001? Among the trustees. Can't put it.
were in support of it wholeheartedly. It was for that reason that the board began to support the federal recognition, because at that time, that was the only way we saw to begin to protect what we had, to hold on to what we had. We still have lawsuits. We, we never can get rid of these lawsuits. They sue us for every little thing. As you know, they sue to get into American schools. They sue to get into Hawaiian homelands. And OHAM has been the only agency out there to help in all of these things. And so, <coughs> you know, so this is one of the main reasons that OHA got into this thing. And that's the position we took, and we, we never changed from that position. Now, you know, with respect to, uh, to the Kanayo uh, Puni and us supporting that, our hope was that we would have a fair election and that all groups would participate. And they could have participated. Some chose not to. You know, everybody had a chance, but then when we got a lawsuit again to stop the election, to stop the, the process, there we were again. So, you know, uh, sometimes it's, it's difficult to walk that way, fly line, trying to uh, help our people and stay within the law and, and try to please everybody. But I can tell you as one individual person, you don't know me for a long time that as we go forward, I give you my word that we're going to try and open this process so everybody has a say. This is not going to be a one-way road. Well, that's my cut in. My cut in. Model. Not going to be a one-way road. The Nayokuni. Nayokuni. I mean, they made, they made it exclusive. And that wasn't for everybody. And plus, you have to sign up. If not, you couldn't even participate. That was heaven. But that's very good. But I just, I'm here. Transparency from all your trustees or you even try to climb it because you just stand fearless. You know like Uncle Peter said, well, we need to be at the table. Yeah. Why? Why we got to think like that? We own the table. Right. Yeah. We own this table. It, it was because it's so important because to international law and US constitutional law, no country cannot keep on another country without a treaty organization and feel twice. Everybody and everybody knows. Why well, your father he said he, he was quoted saying that you needed to be uh, you have to be what you call it uh, illiterate to not know that there was no treaty of annexation. When he said that, I was like, "Well, what did you do for the eight years?" I mean, we still fight. I just saying, no trust. There's no trust. We get we get divisions. 40, 50s against the 49ers. Federal recognition, independence. When the day is done, we all belong to the same. Our Coco, our Mofu, our go back to the Kumulipo. We should, st we should stand in, we should be fearless. And it's because there's no treaty of annexation. We own this table. Mahalo. Zero. I started I'm going late. I just got elected, so I was in here in 2009. And I know we have well, we're supposed to have a policy of one voice and one message. But coming in here, standing on a platform of the 195, and also not really going to be an Indian tribe. And no. No. I, no. I tried to get a bill to the last legislative session, the 195. Thank you. We would hear it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we worked uh -huh. on the Senate too. Other things. Yeah, I'm sorry. The other, I'm not over here. I'm just trying to explain. I'm not really to get any kind of accolades or anything. I just want to share. Writing my article for Kawai Olo last night, I looked up, I started reading about the history of 1898. We were never asked because that's what they said the annexation started in 1898. And we understood that they have a language, a history written because it's all oral. So we got Finally, when I was in the ledge, we got the, um, <coughs> the immersion schools. We started, we started you know, way over in 10th Avenue. But it was the year I was in there. So we got our language going now. So slowly we're building up to so going to be this nation. It takes time. I know frustration sets in. I'm old already. You know, my daughter and my son, I think, come in in 1981, 
but we are slowly getting there. I read, I want to see, and so we kind of trying to work it through. So you gotta get involved, you gotta vote. Right. My my eventually yeah, what I wanna say is that I go on the vote. I did. It's the first year I've read several votes since '86. <laughs> and ask me why. Yee hee! Why? Why? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we trust, but I see it. So I did. Last time I voted, I saw you fall. So, Mahalo. I feel nice. Thank you. Thank you, Mahalo. 2001. The decision by the board is a decision that I'm also support, supporting. I think my, and this is from my guy, the opportunities for Native Hawaiians are few and far between. And I believe that. These opportunities that can be can avail themselves to our people. And it's people here and people that are beyond us, you know, in other places, other islands, maybe even the lovely on the continent. Because there are many, many of our native Hawaiians who would rather be home, who have their ties and genealogy. To this man, we should never for should never disregard them as being important as well or of concern. So, just going to I'll get back to my the point. I think the opportunities for their minds should be at all levels. Should be at all levels, and there are going to be times when. It makes sense to move at one level, it makes sense to move at another level, or a coordinated level. And that is part of us thinking and gut feeling, discerning strategy. And so those are the kinds of things I believe trustees who sit at this table with the mantle or the burden or the opportunity or the, the positive in being able to make decisions and offer decisions to support our Native clients. That we, you know, that we know are out there, are in here, and, and hope to come back to Hawaii perhaps someday. So, I know it's frustrating and because there's a certain direction that this or several of the people that are in this room want to go. And it may or may not be from the from the a strategy point, may or may not be the right time. And that's ultimately some of the decisions or um, process that the Board of Trustees of all has to go through. You know, you can, you, Mr. Cardwell, I agree with you. So, so very sad. So very sad. So much reckless language. Reckless language. And I think if all of us who care about the basic values of our language, or you know, the kind of values that we've grown up with with our families, you know, it's just Hey, you know, sometimes it's it's a matter of you know is is I, is this uh, engaging? Is is this process of talking? Is it discerning? Is it right? You know, and and when and when you, when you attack um, and feel very free to spout out <coughs> untruths or non-facts. People are responsible for the facts or the non-facts. So, you know, we all have to kind of focus on what 
you know, we are going to need to be responsible for, or what our Juliana brings us to deal with at this poor table. And you know, it's it's a it's a tough one because it's clear what certain people in the room want to see happen, and it may or may not be the right time, the right place, and ultimately for the outcome we need. You know, I just say this in finality. We, and, and I, um, I have to, I guess, engage uh, the person that's um, speaking and you know, has stepped up in opposition to me. He supports undoing of Oha. Maybe maybe that's not your opinion, but that's how I see it. Unraveling that. Okay. And he has many folks, as you refer to many folks outside of this room that say right on brother. Let's go for it. Now you guys, you individually, collectively, you gotta decide where you stand on that issue, okay? But I just want to insert here that we still contend with, from the time in memorial uh, uh, on this effort with the, the policy called, the, that, we, that is called the Federal Recognition Policy, we still contend with the 14th Amendment. The possibilities of these benefits, and you know, just trying to get the, the policy, the, the, litigate, the litigation language really down, but it's about protection of our interests under the 14th Amendment for programs. That has always been, from, from 2000, has been a threatening piece, a threatening piece. And it continues today with what we see in the conservative blogs and labs going on in the presidential election. It trails from this place called Grassroots Institute of Hawaii, which is right here in our midst. It trails all the way over to Washington, D.C. That is a reality. This 14th Amendment op opportunity that could become a, a problem for the Hawaiians because we continue to not have the stated policy that provides through the through, through this 14th Amendment protection, which is part of the Constitution of the United States. So we play around with that and we, we disregard and don't pay attention to it. And that is the choice of every individual who has an opinion about what, what should be done. But that is a that's a risk. That continues to be a risk. So I will end there. <laughs> well, okay. You know, um, at this point, I'd like to uh, jump on to board of trustees. Hello, my name is Joshua Moma. I grew up in uh, Ahupua, Kali, Palama. Um, currently in Ahupua, Ahula. My wife and my three kids. Um, here is a uh, community organizer in support of Kaupa Owaiilani, uh, Aloha Aina Wainai. I also come on behalf of um, Aha Aloha Aina uh, Wainai, and I also come on behalf of Aha Aloha Aina Opolo. Um, first, to give you guys the context of Aha Aloha Aina, the Aha Aloha Aina is a coalition, the coalition of um, a, a coalition of those that are steadfast um, toward uh, reaffirming our independence. Okay. We currently reject the DOI rule. We understand that you guys may think that this federal recognition and this path is going on, and I fully respect each of you um, for following your hearts and doing that, but this DOI rule is terrible. It will set us back. And so we affirm, we affirm that with the Aha Lohaina. Um, it actually started out of, in 2014, out of the DOI meetings 
um, that the Department of Interior held, um, and it grew into um, the TNT um, uh, groundbreaking and a rise of nationality, Hawaiian nationality grew out of that uh, great awareness from our scholars at Williams and Chain, analysis from Dr. John Osorio um, has helped us to understand the analysis and a lot of the information that has been um, purposely uh, um, uh, keeping away from our, our community, our kupuna for a hundred years. There are things that we know now that many of you guys at this table did not know growing up. Uh, that's not this, uh, to dislike that, but we are thinking on a different analysis. Um, growing from this field wide means understanding the, the, that there has been a serious wrong that has been done to our people using the grassroots organizing model. We began to have um, little uh, meetings that then discuss how are we going to um, fight this opposition that had so much money this conversation of Nile Pony, Nile about back in 195, Act 77, um, and at the same time outreaching our community. And what that aha, aloha aina, um, was birthed out of that. Today, we've had approximately 25 meetings on Oahu, Maui, Nanaki, uh, Mokati, Hawaii Island, as well as meetings in cities on like Mokuhonu, um, like New York City, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, Salt Lake City, and San Diego. Today, we've reached over 2,500, uh, approximately over 2,500 members, um, um, I'm sorry, not members, participants in our Aha Kaina. And what they have done in these participants is we reaffirm the Declaration of Our Independence, but we also, using the Kino model of organizing, acknowledge everyone's role in nation doing. This is something that we, as organizers, of the principle that true self-determination happens from the ground up organically, not top down from state aid, um, from Act 195 as does in this process. We also acknowledge again the long travesty on the trauma that has happened to our people. So we take time to make space for these types of, um, of conversations to happen. It is very emotional. But one of the things that South Africa did after apartheid was they had a truth and reconciliation commission. That's something I would ask our OHA boards to look into. If you're not gonna fund um, you know, other options, then let's look at funding options that will heal the wounds that have been festering. You know, the DOI rule in this path toward federal recognition on this model does not heal the wounds. In fact, it further, uh, it further festers that wound and it further divides us. Okay, right now, um, I want to dispel also rumors that our side are violent, that our men are violent, that is further from the truth. We, we advocate and we organize under the model of nonviolence. The other, the, um, the other myth that people are saying is that we're stupid or we're uneducated because why some of us aren't lawyers at Richardson School of Law. We know how to read, we know we have reading comprehension, we can understand that. There's also, a vilification that is happening to us because of some who have used some words in regards to treasonous or sellouts. That is something that we have had a discussion in regards to how we're going to our tree. Kalama pointed to that, right? And so we are, amongst ourselves, are now unifying a message of solidarity. Because it's not right to vilify you for, or you, or you for, for wanting to do fair recognition. What we're trying to do is just get everybody at the table to have a true dialogue and actually model a true example of self-determination. Yeah. And that happens from the ground up yeah. and not top yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.
but to say that the processes that you create, the bills you create, will create a neutral platform for our people? We're asking you guys to be straight up with us, straight up with the fact that the 9020 process, the ALA 2016, those are for federal recognition, and that there's been at least $33 million that has been spent on this whole process. And your own data shows that our people want to focus on bread and butter issues. The fact that you guys can go out to our community, talk to our communities in the, in the most rural areas, the people who are struggling the hardest, the ones who have been going with not being ready for democracy and not being ready to accept the plan that you are designating for our people. And any nation, if you look at any nation that creates a constitution, they think about their goal first and then they figure out Ayo. who is the leadership behind it and what is the polypa that backs it up. Ayo. So it's really disingenuous to say, you know, that, that this is a neutral, that Yopuni is a neutral platform. Yeah. It's really disingenuous because everybody, all the folks who have been leadership in the community for independence, we have created our own. Now, the second thing as far as the four points that we're bringing to, to you guys, so we first, that's the, the third point was, is that we want to have a proper accounting to our people in transparency, how much money you guys have spent in this process for federal recognition. Mm. Hey, whoa. Mm -hmm. The next thing is that we're asking you guys to come to our community and actually Open answer to our community. November 19th, we're putting together, we are, with no money, are putting together, again, the education for our people. And we're asking you guys to come out Mm -hmm. to be a part of a panel to sit, discuss side by side, not in this where you guys are in control of this discussion, not in behind locked gates at a country club, but in our community where the doors are wide open, you guys can put down your your out, just like everybody else, and you can, uh, you can let you guys, the people know what your plan is and be open to questions. So November 19th, we invite you guys, in particular, we know the people who are really pushing for us here are Paul and Timonani and Colette. You know, we've, you know, I've been raised in this, and I've, I've known you guys my whole life. And, I, and, I, and you can see where whenever I speak, I don't attack you guys, because I think everybody has a right to your own knowledge. But I think you owe it to our people to actually speak to us and listen to us, because we said, no nation building. OHA doesn't should be involved in that. And regardless of that, you guys kept on going. So, in common mind, if you honestly believe that you know better than our people and that democracy is not something that you're going to support, not even consensus building, not even democracy building is something that you're not going to support, then please come to our people and answer our questions. Mahalo. Hey. Mahalo. Hey. Thank you. On November 19th, what kind of education um, program, or what are you going to be offering and talking about, and where is this going? So right now we've set up a forum in the Winter Community College uh, and the fine, the fine Studies Hall. And on, on that day, we'd like to have a side-by-side -side panel of people who are supporting this networking process and people who are speaking for independence as well. Actually, we have one of the people that we're, that, that, um, that we're considering as a speaker for um, the other side is, like, is their pro-federal recognition. But they, um, uh, they are, what they're speaking for is that they don't think that this current DOI rule is a, is a just one. And I think that's a voice that a lot of people haven't heard as well. I think that's something that needs to be put out there as well, yeah. is that people who are pro-federal recognition, a lot of them are against this current process and are against this constitution as well. Um, and so what we're looking at is having a side-by-side -side panel. Um, we don't want to have it be a back and forth um, 
uh, debate. And what we want to do is state your position, same thing. Everybody gets a chance to state their position, have like uh, six to eight key people. Uh, and the key people that are really pushing behind this on, on, the, on the federal recognition side are uh, is the four pillars. You know, we have the Democratic Party with John Wayne Hay. We have Office of Hawaiian Affairs with, uh, with, the, with the people here. We have CNHA and Shaw for the ones who are really pushing with the um, Department of Hawaiian Homelands. And then we have the Hawaiian Civic Club. And so these are the four people that are, these are the four groups that are really pushing for it. And we're asking for them to come and talk to our people and educate them. You know, we have John Wayne we have Peter Apol, Glenn Machado, Hanin Napoleon, then at the Shaw and the uh, CNHA, we have Robin Kawahane, uh, Robin Danner and Michelle Kawahane. And then we have the Civic Club, so really the, the key person there is Anil Amaral. And so we know these things. It lets reveal who are the key people behind them and be honest with our people about it. And that's what we're asking for. And that's what we're asking for. Every board member, volunteer, and staff person should be able to see the mission and say yes 
This is something I want to be remembered for. But first of all, we must remember it cannot be only focused on the past. Demographics change, needs change. Leadership has no choice but to anticipate the future and attempt to mold it, bearing, in mind, bearing in mind that whoever is content with what's happening in the past will rise the tide but will also fall with it. Yeah. 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 Look at the demographics now. What does it mean now versus what happened in 2001? 15 years ago. The policies there, maybe we should change. I think you asked a better point. But I don't see any problem in defending the policy that we took. I think have a right to know no, no. why we we have the position that we have. And you know, right or wrong, uh, we need to defend it. Yep. And I, I think that honesty is, is the best policy. They they can love it or not like it. But you know, um, to talk to say right up. This is this is why we believe it. I, I believe that um, what I said earlier is is why I chose uh, to go that up because I was the chair when when that all happened. When we lost the race case, when all these lawsuits happened, when the first Apache bill came out, all of that happened on my watch. And so it's I'm very passionate about it because I saw the devastation start to happen then. And I knew that we have to do something to protect ourselves and all the other programs and trust that it was impacted. So those are my reasons. But you are right. That uh, as we go forward, we have to look at how we can improve upon these things and not leave people out and uh, somehow incorporate you know, your thinking with our thinking and try to move together as one more good because in the end, we are all one people. And if there's anything that we have together, it is that spirituality. We can't lose that. And at the end of the day, we're one people. So even if we have a difference in view, viewpoints, we just need to come together on the issues that we can come together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's where I'm coming from. So I'm not going to be here on the 19th, but if I was, I would come and tell you what I believe and I would represent them and be there. But I would have been have and I would be out of town. But I thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I think that one of the things about that with Ava Lavaina that we're trying to really emphasize is that we are one people. We are one people. And there we are reaching across this divide. And we are trying to be a part of the positive solution where we have come up with our own. We could we could just have our little things and not reach out to you guys. You could just have them because you are, because you're reaching out to the people in the furthest, you know, furthest reaches, the ones who are having the hardest time and trying to listen to their voices. And we're trying to reach out, again, also to the ones who are at the highest level right now making decisions for our people. So if we can sit down at a table that, that we want to make it as neutral as possible, you have a, a panel of people speaking, each at three minutes, and then audience can come up and, and ask a question, and everybody gets a minute. Well, we don't have the full final details, but basically there's no moderation. There's no, it's just people talking and speaking to each other. The first thing that we need to do, if you want to even start with you, you kind of start talking to each other. And I appreciate very much your mind. And I think, you know, there are people out there who think that, you know, that people are just, you know, the whole board all has this, you know, a pack of, you know, devils, you know, people are saying that. And I'm like, I'm like listen, you know, a lot of our people really want the good for our people. We totally disagree on the tactic, and I'm fine with admitting to that, doing that. But we got to start talking to each other. And I believe very fully that the vast majority of people who are pushing for federal recognition really truly believe it's what's best for our people. 
You do. Mm-hmm. I will hardly disagree. <laughs> I'll do that. You know, but I don't think that you guys are 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 out there to just totally destroy it. I think you're trying to find out the best path forward. And like, but it's not working. But it's going behind these fortresses, hiding behind these walls of bureaucracy, and going to sheratons of these you know country clubs. So, but Mayo Kuni was a non profit unto itself that conducted a process that got torpedoed by uh, a Kenai company for no, the litigators. The litigators. Okay. So, this is, you know, we do kind of clear what Mayo Kuni was separated apart. A uh, beginning of an effort of a process that was available to all who wished to sign, sign up or to sign up appropriately. And there was a, there definitely was a group of people, I, I don't recall the exact number, 100 and, was it 176, sorry. And, 176, thank you. And, and they were ready to get in and start mixing it up. And of course they were, they were others who said, no, 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 we don't want anything to do with you. You're a group or you're an actor. And that's a decision any, these or any people can make. But that, that effort that got torpedoed by the litigators. Remember the litigators. Kiliakina. Ms. Monique and others, there were others. That's what brought the process <coughs> to a speaking home. And that's okay. So I guess it's about the issue of the facts. You cannot separate ourselves and see the whole proper history. In 1978, when the Constitution of the Nations and the fearless, fearless politics of the moment, we were riding a high wave on the heels of the Ekahol of Ekahana, on the heels of the Okunia. And after decades of total political absence, the people rose up. And the one thing that was never discussed, not to any great degree that I recall, because I was there, was the assumption that we were going after federal recognition. The whole premise of Office of Foreign Affairs being created by Constitution was create a body that would eventually take us to the end of the trail where we would be federal recognized. Federal recognized. That was Brian's uh, one board. I think by and large, I never really heard as much people against that. The congressional delegation was on board. The state legislature was on board. The Hawaii people were on board. The entire state. That's why OHA was created. Okay, now, since then, as was pointed out earlier, some things have changed. Uh, there's some new sentiments that rose. But in the end, what is absent at this point is that the alternatives to federal recognition cannot, at this point, is I haven't heard, be qualified and quantified as to how specifically does independence, uh, help address the few things that are on the top. They want the same thing everybody else wants. Unless somebody is living, I don't know where people are living, they want home ownership. They want quality education for the kids. So the first recognition track was largely built on getting Hawaiians the fastest route to achieving quality of life. 
250 entitlement programs of the federal government worth millions and millions and millions of dollars into the streets of what genocide. That was the okay. so as we move forward, there are there are there are three alternatives uh, to federal recognition. One is independence, and that's been the, the largest group, and that's been probably the, the biggest growing group. There's the status quo. The status quo people, and there are a whole bunch of them because the current situation, a lot of people are making a lot of money with the status quo. They don't want to mess with mm -hmm. And then, and then, surprisingly, when we did a poll about who cares about any of it, most of don't care. That's what the poll showed. Because the reason they don't care about the politics of federal recognition, independence, or the status quo is because they're really busy feeding their kids, sure. right? Trying to get a college education, trying to get decent health care. So when we talk about the Hawaiian people, that's what we've got in mind when we talk. How do we better the quality of life in a real time basis for our people? Therefore, whatever model of sovereignty someone wants to put forward, they have to come forward, one, with the Constitution, and secondly, with some means, uh, with some metrics on exactly how, uh, how independence is going to work. How does that actually benefit Hawaiians? And is it better than a federal recognition model? Or even say this false? That's what's missing, the data. The data is not there. So, you know, we keep going around in circles about the way magic ideas about federal recognition, about this, about that. But federal recognition actually is the only model that we can actually put numbers to now where you can measure the long-term impact of how that would work. So, for those who support our models, I actually totally welcome that dialogue if they can come forward. We're in the Constitution. That would be a great start. We get a Constitution. Okay, then. Then we need to be that will be something that is us. Mostly, I, I, I really like your message about respect. People respecting each other and respecting others' views. But in the end, when I talk about whether we're prepared for democracy, I'm not saying that we're not, uh, we're not democratic. But for some reason, we can never get it to a ballot. However it needs to happen, that, in my opinion, has to be the final our writer of which way we go. It has to be put to a vote to the Hawaiian people. Now, if you guys have an idea as to how you can make that happen, great, I'm off. Well, we all have an idea. The thing is that we'd, we'd like to have a full accounting about the spending and the federal recognition after we get back from Omaha. And the second thing is to start going into our communities and dialoguing and start building a for the questions. That's I right. think that there's been a tremendous amount of lack of trust that's been happening uh, to connect with, the, with OHA and uh, the average people. I agree with you. The one thing I think we can all agree upon is our people are drowning. We're drowning in debt. We're drowning in despair. We're drowning in all of these different things that people are struggling with. And I think if we can unite on that, we, we might totally differ about the fact that our people, you know, how to born, but I think if we can unite on the fact that our people are drowning, but what do you do with somebody who's drowning? Do you say, come to this place and point and sign up for this list and then I'll go ahead and save you? Or do you go to where they're drowning and help take care of them, where they're living, where they're at, where they're struggling? And so this invitation is open to you guys, and I say it with all the love in my heart. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's kind of awesome. Oh, great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Uh, I think that that's the biggest part. Yo. I really went in there with. Um, you know, good faith, because I'm always been for the independence of our nation, from a justice point of view, but also from an environmental point of view, that we cannot keep letting our islands be um, polluted and ruined by the occupation of the U.S. military and 
things like having all the GMO companies of the world based here on our ad lands, spreading pesticides, poisoning our land, poisoning yeah. our bees, poisoning our people, poisoning the animals that live there, everything. Um, but I was at the AHA, and um, I went with Big Bay. I participated in the committees, and if you guys watched the video of the plenary sessions, you missed out on what happened in the committees. I was in the communication <coughs> committees um, that made a, a, a initial decision that only good news would come from that committee. They weren't going to tell our Lahui what was happening in there if it was controversial. That was the decision that was made. I get to do that decision, I was overruled. Another committee I was in was the preamble committee. The preamble committee, we fought in that committee to keep the one little phrase in the preamble that we would preserve the right of our people to pursue our independence. And numerous times in that committee, that language was intended to be stricken out. At one point, I was called away from, the, from that committee. When I returned, they said, oh, we struck that out. And I said, wait, what happened? We struck it out, and I had to argue and push and push to get it back in. So it gets back into our preamble of this constitution. Then, I think it was the second to last day of the AHA, we were called aside again and told by the chair of that committee, Kandi Kuoha, that that language, that the drafting committee or another committee was wanting to strike that language out again. This was a whole room, a larger room than this, half of people. Even the people that are pro-federal recognition objected strenuously because it was a decision made by the people in that committee to keep that language in, even the ones that control federal recognition. So, oh, well, okay. A couple more points I wanted to say. I really wanted to open with that. A quote from Brown Fulton Emerson, who is one of the, uh, the the great thinkers that I admire, um, and that is that life is about the journey, not the destination. And the other quote I wanted to share with you is also a quote from Emerson. The voyage of the best ship is a zigzag line of a hundred tracks. So when you folks are looking back to 2001 and a decision that made in 2001, Look at what is happening today. Look at Standing Rock. Look at Mauna Kea. Look at the rising of our people. Look at the educational level that our people are attaining and the strength of our cause. We, and I want to talk about what Uncle Mahani said to you about being brave. Because our, the way the world sees us is up to us. And the world is changing. You can see it happening all around us. Thinking that we could never have a chance to be independent is not the same as it was 10 years ago. Britain just left the European Union. It's leaving after 43 years. We've been under, what, statehood for 60 something years. We can leave. We can do it too. We have to be ready. And I hope that you guys will support with funding. When, when I hear the people that support federal recognition say repeatedly, what's your plan? What's your plan? You guys don't have a plan. They say that. That's their own chart. But how can we have a plan if no one will fund a plan? How can we have a plan? All of us here, we go to meetings in our community what? all the time. We're just you know, community members doing these things on our own time. We're trying to make a difference in our community. We want to make a difference in our life. But are we funded? No. It's the independent fraction of our community, which is over very large action, despite what has been portrayed. No, we're not funded. We need funding. We need to, to have a plan. We have to have research done. We have to put, invest in the process. But I think I will consider making this a guideline. Let's stick to what is was made and say that the world is changing. And we are changing. And we can make it different choices and we can pursue what might be a better option for our islands than federal recognition. But I think it is a better option. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Jelani.
So this song, just before preparing for the for the for the for the voyage over there, I was reaching to the to a, a copy reprint. Get back to square one. We are 
people of national origin. So where am I now? Right now, the North Fork of the, the Wildwood River has been diverted. There are no waterfalls and no running rivers in Coquette. They have all been diverted. Come for hydro. Yes. So time, where do I come? Do I come to Oha to ask Oha stand up? No. Oha cannot stand up. You know who's going to stand up? It's the ones that are on the ground who have never lost their entitlements, their interests. Aye. That's who, wherever it's at right now. The job camps of prisons are full. It's not that they're bad in Sarira on the street. The street is dirty, and the system that we have of enforcement cannot clean it up because they are people. Oh, it's a business. Where are all the people to go on the aina? In the jails, the big club. By coercion, you are forced to. Last night I was given a very special book. It's volume three of the Little Bird of Trials. When they had to define what is criminal. They had to try to qualify the Nazi regime as criminal. You know what the first thing that you pointed out was? All the system of coercion. Okay. It's a difficult, we are in a difficult time. We can do it. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. We never lost anything. When, it, when the guys from Kaula, we went before Sam King, we talked about religion, not guilty. Why <coughs> says the spider to the fly? I'm going to say to the ground, it's not even a way of jacket. Native American religious Native, we are not native for when we have national religions. And upon that, that can rise us all. We can move forward. We accept who we truly are. Because going forward, going forward means, are we going to revisit the same history prior to Kamehameha? That's what I saw when 2014 came. The people came out, the head came out, said, no, how dare you come? We know what we need. We don't need your permission. We got the water, we get the bad we the sheep. We're just being nice. But what we will be dealing with, if this was another place, it would be the next Vietnam. That is my view. That is why I push, that is why I go. That's why I will go again. The venue for us internationally is here. Yeah. Okay. Because I do not want to see us go to country. Because nobody can. Who who can protect me when I'm living on the street and twice I fight the cops and they give me citation for human habitation in a park where I grew up? And I'm just one little guy. I'm glad to see the Ohana on the streets in Libale. Because there's no place better for them to be on street to get you laid out. You just sleep in the back of my car. Whatever your mind you can share with the leaders in that room. I'm glad to see them. We can take care of them. Oh, our programs, programs, programs. Politics was already set. And we have been finding out that they have. But deletion doesn't mean it doesn't exist. They can delete whatever we stay here. And our fight is on to stop the exploitation. We need a land freeze from the Interior Department. Yeah. And we need Obama to come clean. Yeah. He gave the executive order. We need votes. We don't need nothing. We already have our recognition. Mahalo and see you guys when I see you the next time. Mm -hmm. And take care and do the best you can do.
Ang kulit ko. Okay, paycheck so. And we're getting ready to release a whole bunch of songs at the end of this month. But up of America, the world is waiting for us. It would be wonderful to see us come.
that they had to put the preservation of the monument on the preservation act. Um, I feel like it would stop it right in its track. But they've been, like I said before, they've been avoiding it for over 43 years. And, uh, yeah. I Can you then you been on your Not right now. I, I, I'm in it right now. I can't say anything. I just worry about our mama, you know, because... That would be devastating to the mountain. And there would be no possibility that they could put it back. They're not, they're not better. They're, they wouldn't be able to put it back. That's as it is. But the way can assure you follow about it. Anti Claire. comment 
I will say, such as the Na'iyapuni, we know that Na'iyapuni was really in danger when the five groups became five individuals and it no longer satisfied Act 195. And I think it's a blessing that the lawsuit came to stop this process because it was not what would be able to bring us together. I think that we have everything we need to come together. What we need is for people to be honest and for everyone to not be changing our history. And I believe this is why the Kukuna saw to it to get through my head to start to bring to light what our Kukuna did for us. The fact that we can protest at Mauna Kea because there was no annexation ever. The only legal attempt failed. And everything else has been an attempt as it is today. I think about our kupuna and would they align themselves with this country, the United States of America, or the United States Corporation? Would they align themselves with them? They are the United States is hated throughout the world for doing exactly what they did to us. And we're going to align ourselves with them. I think that they had great vision. The queen had great vision. Although things are said that she said that, um, but the truth is, I believe that throughout her entire life to her death, as is recorded by Dr. Kim Sai, in her will, she was fighting for our kingdom of independence. And all the other words that are used, including what Oha always says that the Queen said, we know that she ever said that it was Lydia a home of her daughter. Those words, why don't we continue to foster history that is not true?
And so we have agencies that are trying to apply laws that don't apply to us. And we have been convinced over and over again, this is our only option. Well, I went researching at the UN library and I found out we have other options. And one of the options that I took, because I had an opportunity to do it, was I made a domestic protest. As um, a link to the House of Commandment, because in a constitution that is still in continuity, there are, the kingdom belongs to king, the successors, and the heir. My king and sisters, the heirs, have the right to the kingdom, and we have the right to decide what is going to be happening to our people and our kingdom. I take that step. It is on the record. And I will not back down. I ask the international attorneys over there, can a country take another country when they don't even list the names of the islands or the the means and amounts of those countries? And of course they said no. So why are we listening to the federal government who tries to
Nuikki aloha. Mahalo.
specifically referring to this? I haven't even seen that. No, I'm all the Number two was to sell that the University of Hawaii was in one of the small ones. Everybody was, the amount of was passed. They all submitted reports on that. On that. So when I came here, at that time, I'm sorry I don't have the page, but this is many years ago, I asked if those reports had, had been made fundamental and that the board had gone to us. No, we never had it. And I think at that time we were around either number four or going into number five. Um, as far as, again, the factual, being you know, a fact check. Or all this stuff put in front of you. You know, but again, it's very disconcerting. They're hearing, you're hearing what they want, and then you're getting a response to that. So you know, you know, all this. Well, I have no knowledge of this matter. I can confirm or deny uh, any existence. But then it is on file. And I think we even have video and all that stuff from Olelo to personal stuff that they show that. So, so. Okay, if you could please uh, keep me in the event. Thank you for all. Okay, thank you. Of, 
um, uh, conversations that happen. It is very emotional. But one of the things that South Africa did after apartheid was they had a truth and reconciliation commission. That's something I would ask our board to look into. If you're not going to fund um, you know, other options, then let's look at funding options that will heal the wounds that we've hey, The DUI and the task force federal recognition on this model does not heal the wounds. In fact, it further, uh, it further festers that wound and it further divides us. Okay? Right now, um, there's still also rumors that our side are fighting, that our men are fighting, that, that is further from the truth. We advocate and we organize under the model of non fights the other, the, um, other men that people think that we're stupid or educated because some of us aren't lawyers at Richardson School of Law. We know how to read, we know we have reading comprehension, we can understand that. There's also, a vilification that is happening to us because of some who have used some words in regards to treason or sellouts. That is something that we have had a discussion. The Lama pointed to that. Right? And so we are, amongst ourselves, are now unifying a message of solidarity. Because it's not right to vilify you for, or you, or you for, for wanting to do fair recognition. What we're trying to do is just get everybody at the table to have a true dialogue and actually model a true example of self-determination that happens on the Bronx Hill. and not talk Hill. All the better, Josh. Thank you, Chair Thank you. Lindsay.
the 20s. But I, I believe it's still your responsibility as those who represent all beneficiaries to say that there are these other viewpoints and this is what they are and and why they are, you know, and accurately represent that to, again, the state of Hawaii, the United States of America, and the people. You know, those are very, very important. And um, I would also uh, like to say that I, I really liked the suggestion about the educational, um, the ed efforts within the state of Hawaii. Um, something that, that needs to be clarified about the movement for independence is that from what I have seen, it is not against working with in system at all. People are not is a completely separate point. You know, it's not against working in the system, it's against giving up rights that are not ours to give up because they belong to our descendants and they came from our kubuna. So I want to be really clear about that, that working at all levels, inside the system, outside the system, all around, they're all very, very important. And they they all need to be done in a mono way, and mono means it needs to be something that means wellness for all, and is right mono for all, and that um and it doesn't in any way harm something that is very valuable that has been passed down from the kupuna to those who are not yet born. So I would just please like to ask that one thing, representation for all of the viewpoints of the Lahui, regardless of what the official position is. Thank you, Lord Justice. Mahalo. Okay, we're out of here. Love you, Love you guys. <laughs> Love you. Aloha. Thank you. How's everything? I know. Oh, thank you. Thank you. 
Take on Kiki right outside, okay. right there, because I, I gotta go. I gotta share with you guys. Yeah, we got options in Chang today. Well, are you coming Sunday? Are you, you coming Sunday, yeah. right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, come Sunday. 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 That's, our, that's our church today. Yeah. We're up at the uh, low E. Up to Allah. Come on Sunday. Yeah, they both you folks in share. Yeah, we're going to give some money. Okay, do it. Okay, do it. Okay, do it. Okay, do
are changing. And we can make different choices and we can pursue what might be a better option for our islands than federal recognition. And I think it is a better option. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lenny. coming up. Me, when she was asked to come before the committee, she kind of to annoy which I was the chairman of the subcommittee of affairs. Her statements, these statements have been brought forth. She said very clearly, really not my today, on because I'm in the House of Representatives. But since she asked me to come, it was safe to do it at that meeting. She said, clients need time to discuss things amongst themselves. She recognized. Yeah. Yo. Thank you. 
That's the condition of Jesus. So this song, just before preparing for the for the for the for the voyage over there, I was reaching to the to a, a copy reprint. Then we will should be able to have everything that our hands need. 
back to square one. We are people of national origin. So where am I now? Right now, the North Fork of the the White War River has been dedicated. There are no waterfalls and no running rivers in Coquet. They have all been diverted, coming for high service. Yes. Where do I come? Do I come to Oha to ask Oha stand up? No. Oha cannot stand up. You know who's going to stand up? Is the ones that are on the ground who have never lost their entitlements, their interests. That's who, wherever it's at right now. The job camps of prisons are full. It's not that they're bad in Sahara on the street. The street is dirty. And the system that we have of enforcement cannot clean it up because they are politics. It's a business. Where are all the people to go on the Aina? In the jails, they've been caught. By coercion, they are forced to. Last night I was given a very special book, the volunteer of the Nuremberg Asylum. When they had to define what is criminal, they had to try to qualify the Nazi regime as criminal. And you know what the first thing that they pointed out was? The August system of the war. It's a difficult, we are in a difficult time. We can do it. We yeah. don't have to reinvent the wheel. Yeah. We never lost anything. When, it, when the guys from Kaula, we went before Sam King, we talked about religion, not guilty. Fine, <coughs> says the spider to the fly. Mm. I'm going to send you to the promise, now you're going to wear the doctor. And they get the nurse to believe that you were not the doctor. Native, we are not native for when, or else we have to wear. We have national religion. And upon that, that can advise us. We can move forward. Who we truly are. Because going forward, going forward means are we going to revisit the same history prior to Kamehameha? That's what I saw when 2014 came. The people came out, the head came out, said, No, how dare you come? We know what we need. We don't need your permission. We got the water, we get the land, we your sheep. We just be nice. But what we will be dealing with, if this was another place, it would be the next Vietnam. That is my fear. That is why I push, that is why I go. That's why I will go again. The venue for us internationally is there. Yeah. Because I cannot want to see us go to God's way. Because nobody can. Who who gonna protect me when I'm living on the street and twice I fight the cops and they give me citation for human habitation in the park that I have to run? And I'm just going to get out. I'm glad to see the Ohana on the street in Nibale. Because there's no place better for them than the street to live in right now. You just sleep in the back of the car. But I think I'm going to destroy them. They can't do this to us. I'm glad to see them. They can take care of them. Oh, our programs, programs, programs. Politics was already set for them. And we have been finding out that they have. By deletion, doesn't mean it doesn't exist. They can delete whatever we still have. And our fight is on to stop the exploitation. We need a land freeze on the Interior Department. Yeah. And we need Obama to come clean. He gave the executive order. We need votes. We don't need nothing. We already have our recognition. Mahalo. And see you guys when I see you the next time. Mm -hmm. and Take care, I do the best you can do it in the situation. <laughs>
Oh, Kaliko. Hey, Patriots, so. And we have half, a half hour for that to happen. At noon, we're going to executive session. That session is going to be a long session. So I don't want to keep anyone waiting. So if you could help me keep my promise, keep things from five minutes, please. <laughs> I'd appreciate that. Oh, no.
kill. Oh, good one. Claire? Auntie Claire. such as the Na'iyahuni, we know that Na'iyahuni was really in danger when the five groups became five individuals and it no longer satisfied Act 195. And I think it's a blessing that the boss came to stop this process because it was not what would be able to bring us together. I think that 
We have everything we need to come together. What we need is for people to be honest, open. Everyone who cannot be changing our history. And I believe this is why the people that saw to it and get to my head to start changing, to bring to light what our Kukuna did for us. The fact that we can protest at Mauna Kea because there was no annexation ever. The only legal no. attempt <coughs> failed. And everything else has been an attempt as we need today. I think about our kupuna and would they align themselves with this country, the United States of America, or the United States Corporation? Would they align themselves with them? They are, the United States is hated throughout the world for doing exactly what they did to us. And we're going to align ourselves with them. I think that they had great vision. The queen had great vision. Although things are said that she said that, um, but the truth is, I believe that throughout her entire life to her death, as is recorded by Dr. Kim Sai in her will, she was fighting for our kingdom and independence. And all those other words that are used, including what Oha always says that the queen said, we know that she never said that. It was Lydia a whole of her daughters. No.
Ew. You passed that. It is on the record. And I will not back down. I ask the international attorneys over there, can a country take another country when they don't even list the names of the islands or the, the, the means and amounts of those countries? And of course they said no. So why? Well, there
steps that are being provided to us by the so-called victors, by our occupiers, by our colonizers, by the thieves, by the liars, by whatever you choose to call them, that's a game that we no longer want to play. So that's a game where my friend Kalama has asked you folks to become participants. We recognize that you folks have full and busy schedules. But we can't <coughs> tell you zero money. You, know, you want to talk about grassroots? No. So we want to hear. I don't know what really happens in the first month. I'm guilty enough reading it on my <laughs> But it's definitely on my mind. I know the idea of the past is regarding our education, our public charter schools. Yeah. Shadow.
Yes, because we want our people to come. People are working. And when they're not working, they're going to work. They're not working. 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 Okay. Mahalo. Mahalo. No, he killed her. Thank you. 
people with rights versus defense rights and versus the defense rights, the right to choose to do a whole thing, screw up, prosper, do whatever. In this life, you only have a limited amount of tools that are handed to you. My second point is, um, I'm sorry that Mr. Paul is not here, but I have to reiterate something that I said some many years ago, sad that he's in this very same position. He said that the independence model we looking for um, and to come forward and present to the board that plan to appear and so forth. And I'm taking it back again because I've never had to ask the same question. The Columbia series, when it was first initiated, I was a part of that. I submitted a symposium to the administration and some of the department heads about how it should be run. That symposium, however, whatever it was,
despite that, but we are taking on a different analysis. Um, growing from the COI means understanding the, the, that there's been a serious wrong that has been done to our people in the grassroots organizing model. We began to have um, little uh, meetings and then discuss how are we going to um, fight as much money, this conversation of 2,500, uh, approximately over 2,500 members um, of, I'm sorry, not members, participants in our AHA. And what they have done in these participants is we reaffirm the Declaration of Our Independence, but we also, using the of organizing, have acknowledged every morsel in nation building. Yeah. This is something that Hill. Hill. All about it, Josh. Thank you, Chair Lindsay. Thank
picture of the way to the United States of America and to the world and to our people, to the people that you represent as to where the law stands. And um, as Trustee Apo said, there are different groups. Some of them may be for that recognition. Some are for independence. There is some group that wants a lot. But there, there is some overlap. Um, and there are those who responsibility as those who represent all beneficiaries to say that there are these other viewpoints and this is what they are and and why they are you know and accurately represent that to again the state of Hawaii the United States of America and the people you know, those are very, very important. And um, I would also uh, like to say that I, I really liked the suggestion about the educational, um, the educational efforts within the state of Hawaii. Um, something that, <coughs> that needs to be clarified about the movement for independence is that from what I have seen is not against working with in the system at all, is a completely separate point. You know, it's not against the system, it's against giving up rights that are not ours to give up because they belong to our descendants and they came from our kubuna. So I want to be really clear about that, that working at all levels, inside the system, outside the system, all around, they're all very, very important, and they all need to be done in a pono way, and pono means it needs to be something that means wellness for all, and is right
okay. But fundamentally, We kill Lord Justice Mahalo. Okay, out of here. Love you, love you. Love you guys. Love you. Aloha. Take on Kiki right outside, right here, because okay. I, I gotta go. I gotta share with you guys. Yeah, what options are. in Chang today? Well, are you, are you coming Sunday? <clears throat> are you you coming yeah. Sunday? Right? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah come Sunday. Sunday. Come to our, Sunday. Uh, our, that's our church today. Yeah. We are up at the uh, Loi. Come, come on Sunday. Yeah, they both you folks can share. Yeah. 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 Yeah.